Bomb World, this is Proficient, repping Una Sola Vida, photography and entertainment, we coming together and we gonna do great things man, we gotta put this music together, New York City, Queens, Far Rockaway, to Harlem, to all over the world, international, this is reality music, reality rap, hip hop is back, we gonna show y'all through proving it, through our music and through the work we put out there, stay on the lookout. Keys and cop C wow. and try to lock me, stereotype, scary at night. Uh. Yo, this is proficient. I'm about to spit something for y'all off the mixtape. I lost my mind a long time ago. You ready? Yo, I'm confident, I am focused, I promise I keep it going out of poverty, out of quotas and status quo maintaining. I grab my soul like playing the saxophone. It's all in the breath to be born to the death. Everything I do has cause and effect, so I keep it cool. Cause the laws in the flesh, seeking how we do, leaving public school. Felt like I was learning just how to be a fool. But the people that own it, own the economy too. What are we to do? Get knowledge. I got a good enough diploma, then I go the way to college. Learn about environments, the business and the science, and capitalistic history. Accounting and counting the money green. We just consumers and numbers for many companies. What are you willing to do to live comfortably? Are we living or just existing? Question, are we living or just existing? Question, am I living or just existing? Question, are you living or just existing? Question, are we living or just existing? You know what I mean? And it's called, I lost my mind a long time ago. Because when you lose your mind in the way, you free it. So it's really a metaphor to free in your mind. You know, it doesn't mean you're crazy. Sometimes when you free your mind, people think you're crazy because you're able to see so much for what it is. But dude, you're not crazy. You're just free. So, well, ISO stands for Intellectual Spiritual Revolution. It's a Queens-based group with an artist named Frank Silva, which is, uh, he's been doing it for about 15 years under the radar, but he's real dope. We, on it. we like psychic when it comes to making music, like whatever, he'll have a topic in mind when I hear it beat and we'll both have the same topic, you know what I mean, in mind and without even speaking, like we'll speak without words when it comes to music, so. And that's what we feel is needed right now too, an intellectual, spiritual revolution that comes from each person getting to master themselves. And I th we think that's the key, you know what I mean, awakening to, to, to your higher self. Well, I would say one real message to the youth would be to you know, don't look for love in other people, man. Love yourself, you know? Do things in your life that will make you, that'll make you love yourself, man. Like, you know, do things that build up your faith, you know, work on what you want to work on, you know what I'm saying? If you love dancing, if you love doing music, if you love drawing, you know, whatever it is, try to, try to make it in that, you know what I mean? And what you love to do. And also go to school and do what you got to do, but, you know, learn how to love yourself how to love the way you think, love your own ideas, love, love yourself so you don't have to look up to other people as role models, man. I think that's real liberating. You, you learn to love yourself. I'm trying to learn that as well because the real battle is within us. It's the war is not in Iraq, it's not here. The real war, the biggest war we ever going to face is the war within ourselves. You know what I'm saying? Conquer jealousy, envy, all those emotions that keep us in a state of loneliness and sadness, you know, try to break out of that, man. Go outside, go to the world. Don't be stuck on Facebook all day and Instagram, you know what I'm saying? You know, make your own Instagram, you know what I'm saying? Think big, I would say. Think big because right now you can do whatever you want, you know what I'm saying? No matter how old you get either, you could be 50 or 80, you can still do whatever you want. But if you learn that young, you will do so much by the time you reach my age and our age that you'll be able to... To, to you'll, you'll be able to, to offer the youth that's coming after you opportunities to do what they want to do. I don't know, I'm just a human, you know, compared to the universe and what the creator created, uh, the most high, call him the eternal father. I'm just, uh, uh, I'm just like the size, how an ant is to us, that's how I am compared to that force, you know what I mean? But at the same time, I, that force created me, you know? And created us, it created everything that I see around me, the sun, the universe, the planets. But I think it's a force that exists inside of nature, inside the, 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 
the song that the bird is singing right now, you know what I mean? It's a force that makes him sing, it's a force that makes me talk this way, it's a force that brings us together, and I think that force exists in our hearts, which pumps life into our, our bloodstream, you know what I mean? It pumps life into us, and you know, since ancient times, you know, the Mayans and everything, we, we all believe that, you know, that, that heartbeat, you know, the palpito of huracan, which is our heart, is where God lives, you know, because it gives us that force. And I think that, not that we are gods, no, people take the wrong way. There is a higher force, I believe. We're, we're tiny compared to it. But we all have the potential, like a, um, like a worm has the potential to become a butterfly. You know, once it goes to the, to, to the cocoon and changes and goes through its transformation, we all have the potential to transform ourselves into our higher self and get connected to God because we've lost that connection to God. And I think God is, a, is really connected to our hearts, to, 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 to the, for the source of life, source of true love. That's within us all, you know what I'm saying? I think that, that, that we've lost that over the time, so we don't understand those concepts through religion and others. But I think I'm, our body is the temple, and my life is my religion, you know what I mean? And what I do, my actions, define whether I'm with God or I'm with the devil, you know what I'm saying? So I think God is, 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 is everywhere, you know what I'm saying? And it's definitely inside. We got that force inside us because we created all of these buildings, all this stuff, our mind. It's the mind of God in a different form and fashion. Like, this is the mind of God, you know? So I think if we stop thinking just like men and we try to think like God, like our Father, we will create greatness, you know what I'm saying, out here. You know what I mean? So I think we're, we're men with potentials to be gods. To be like a god. So, 15, 100 years. Shit, the way it's going with Syria and all this shit, I don't think there's going to be a world to fucking look forward to. You know? I think a lot of this shit that we look up to now as, um, you know, hip and trendy and all this shit, I think a lot of that shit will be things of the past. You know, I think we'll be, as, hu as a human race, we would have evolved so much. We would be so much wiser. 50 to 100 years from now that we'll make technology and, um, you know, we'll create sustainable societies and communities where we will be able to actually, you know, expand our, what can you call it, we, 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 we'll live longer, you know, we, we, we'll try to make life more sustainable, you know, I think through, I think 50 to 100 years, we would have we already dealt with all these wars and chemical weapons and been through so much shit that we would have to, we would transform into those butterflies, you know what I mean? As far as my culture and my heritage, uh, my father was Guatemalan and my mother comes from Colombia. She comes from Cali, Colombia, Yumbo, Yumbo Valle, and uh, I have more connection with my Colombian culture, but I, my culture is really New York City, Far Rockaway. That's really where I was raised at, where I was born at, and where I learned most of my, you know, where I learned through most of the experiences that I had in Far Rockaway. But yeah, I did get a chance to travel to uh, Colombia and I would love to travel to Guatemala as well. The most memorable place that I've been to, uh, I would say Arizona. When I went to Arizona with, I got the opportunity to go there through some friends and family that I met in Colombia. And, uh, you know, they invited me to go on a road trip to Arizona to meet the Hopi tribe, Native American tribe. And, and we stayed there for about a week and we actually slept out in the desert and all that in tents and it was a real great memorable experience because we had people come from South America, Central America along with the Hopi and we had a great gathering, a meeting and just the love and the, and the power and the force that we felt up there was, it was just unexplainable man. It's real, it was beautiful man to see the power that we have when we come together, different cultures, different people for one cause, you know, for love, for to, to combat war, to combat, you know, oppression and, and things like that, man. So I'll say Arizona, man. I met real interesting people. I met, you know, some people, I don't know if I can say their name right now because they they, they chiefs in, in the tribes and stuff like that, but definitely learned a lot of wisdom from them, man. I remember one quote one of the of Hopi said, he said, don't ever trust a man too much because his heart could change in a second. So, it's, it's, you know, you got to be real to yourself, you got to love yourself and 
love your family and those around you. And you got to put the right energy out there because the energy we put out there affects the earth as well, the earth's magnetic field and everything. And, you know, I learned a lot of our power within that we have out there. You know what I mean? So Arizona, Hopi, um, the Mesas out there. That was one of my most memorable trips. If I was to be able to travel back in time, hmm, I want to travel all the way back to when the Mayans and the Incas had their empires risen up. And I would love to see that for myself. I'd love to see the pyramids in full color and full spectrum. I'd love to see how the kings ruled at those times. I'd like to see if most of the history that they taught us is actual fact, if we were actually savages and Korean death rituals and stuff, because I don't believe that. I think we were much smarter than that. We were architects, we were mathematicians and scientists. And I'd love to go back there and learn from my people directly and speak to them directly. If I had the opportunity to go back to the future, if I had that device <laughs> to go back into, into the past or into the future or travel through time, I'd definitely love to meet my ancestors in person and shake their hand, touch them, and see who they were. I would love that. I would love to do a song with Bob Marley. <laughs> Word. <laughs> I'd love to do a song, like a freedom song. I'd like to do a remix to, to Redemption song and Songs of Freedom. And, and really have that backing from a, 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 such a powerful um, artist as Bob Marley to put that message out there. I think if I had someone like, Bar if we was able to do a collaboration with an artist like Bob Marley, people would hear what I got to say more, being the impact he had. He was able to speak about what he wanted to speak about and speak about love and without all these, he did it on independently and he went out there and made it happen and made millions off of it. And I would love to travel with him and be able to meet him. And, Cause I see that that guy was, he was, he, he, was for, he was for love, not war, you know? And if I was to be able to have a million dollars, I would, I would, I would want to see what i do with it because I have ideas, man. And I would love to put those into place. Love to open a school, you know, where you could teach people about not just the curriculum, but teach them how to teach them life lessons and things that are actually help to motivate them to live more, you know, not just be consumers and workers. So I would love to be a millionaire so I could do all those things and open up schools and be like the Rothschilds, own our own parks and centers and stuff like that. But something that could actually help the community, not just make money out of the com and take the power away from them. I would like to empower the community. And my favorite book? Hmm. I would say uh, The Four Agreements by um, Don Miguel Ruiz, I believe the name is of the author, but The Four Agreements is a real good book. It's real simple teachings that came from the uh, Toltec culture, which was a, like it branched off from the Mayan culture. and. <clears throat> the teachings are real basic, like don't take anything personal, you know, be impeccable with your words, like keep your words and don't assume anything and always do your best. And those are the four agreements and I remember those things. So I would say that book really resonated with me. Every time going through something or whatever, I always remember those four agreements that I read in that book and, and it actually helps to not take anything personal. You know, everybody's problem even if they're coming at you with stuff, it's something deeper than that and that's inside of them and it has nothing to do with you at the end of it all. One of my favorite quotes is a quote that I read in a, um, uh, from a Latin American author called Carlos Torres. He said, uh, a man like to dress himself of everything he's missing. It's in all walks of life. Like It could be either on the street, it could be a gangster, thug, but deep down inside he's probably real sensitive and emotional and he gets a great, he dressed himself a tough guy, could be a police officer for instance, he could lack that courage, that, that power, so he dressed himself as a police officer to, to cover up his power and, and have all this, you know, so I think uh, a man like to dress himself for everything he's missing, that's a simple quote, but it's real deep, and you know, it made me analyze myself too, to be real, like, you know, not to dress myself of anything that I'm not, I love working with the youth, that's something that motivates me to keep moving forward in life, knowing that, um, something that, 
like the things that I couldn't do in life, I could influence other youth that are that are good in that area to to do it in life. Like I think that working with the youth, I could I really want to make a change in this world little by little. And I think it starts with the youth, with empowering the youth, because the youth are our future. And when we work with the youth, we're working with the future. We're working with what's to come next. And I think it's really important, you know, as young men and women to share our ideas and our passions now that we're we're still young and we can relate to the youth i think i love working with the youth and tutoring and working as an assistant teacher at you know different high schools and working you know after school programs and volunteering i've learned a lot you know being a you know being a student and a teacher at the same time because i got to learn from my students as well what's hit right now what's going on and you know what's to come and also got to share my ideas with them and influence a lot of them to 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 focus on what they really love to do i try to influence them to do what they really want to do not just what they feel to set out to them you know a lot of things that set out to them isn't positive one blood universal is is a dope movement because you know it was started by a teacher and and he has that direct connections to the youth you know being that they, they they get to see him every day they get to study with him and he chose to take it another direction outside of the school system and help them find their true passions within themselves they were what they love to do and I think One Blood Universal is gonna is, is gonna be real big in the future it's something that people might not get now but it's, it's something that's so ahead of its time that you know what I'm saying? When it does come out to the public and stuff like that, and, and it does get out there, people are, are going to be in a level where they understand that because we need to come together. And you know what I mean? One way or the other. And it starts with the youth. If we see the youth coming together, parents see the youth coming together, and they're doing something positive instead of something negative, like joining gangs, little by little, they, those kids are going to start forming One Blood Universe. They own organizations. They own a sense of they're gonna start feeling that, that sense of freedom that they have to do whatever they is that they wanna do in life and not follow a leader to be leaders. So I think that's a great movement and that's why I'm a part of it and I support it. Proficient freestyle at the top of my head. I'm just gonna make it up as we go, all right? Yo, so you on the space orbiter, you just landed in another fucking solar system, another galaxy, All right. and this planet's got life on it. All right, yo, this planet's got life on it, and it's trite for shit. People don't inflict no cocaine in their veins. People don't go insane. People don't be trying to conquer and go warmongers over terrain. Shit is real different. Humans speak through to telekinesis. They don't worship Jesus. It's kind of different. Everybody's a genius. I feel it like I was there and I seen it firsthand. God damn, it's like the world is not run by programs. Everybody's a free man and woman. We got technology to enhance life, sustainability. They call me the space orbiter. I traveled on in her. Yeah, I went across the planets, expanded throughout the atric, the masses across the atlas, across the axis of the planet Earth. I left my turf, then I landed in another solar system. Behold the wisdom. I came out the spaceship and was like, like, yo, everybody, this is proficient. I was greeted by millions and they all look human. Damn, I thought there was gonna be ugly aliens, stranger than fiction, I think, but damn, I was wrong. Shit, out my brain, I'm going hard. Am I in a planet like Venus and Mars? Nah, this is another planet that was beings of gods. Yeah, that shit was way different by far. I'm coming up with this off the top of my dome. It's like I can't even come to that blue rock core home. No more, I'm lost in space. Fell off course, and of course, I saw a different race. We not divided by states we're not divided by lying and hate we over here in the atmosphere we could breathe we could travel we could fly across the stratosphere we could land back and create our own careers through our imagination captivation no hesitation we got different kind of education the education is in parks where people walk outside and they talk but they don't use their mouth like I said, they use their heads. So they using lead, no guns, no warfare. The weapon is us. Yo, they addressing us and we all dealing with trust. We don't got no government above us. None of that. 
We all work together to unity and unification and dedication. Annihilation is not a word in our language. We expanded. Shit, I want to come back to this earth and teach them all what I learned in that planet.